What are the chances by the end of this year we see another massive crypto bull market? In this video, I'm gonna talk about what the chances are and what actually would need to happen, in my opinion, in order for crypto to go on another massive bull market. Now, you wanna watch this video because if you time this correctly, this could lead to serious life-changing gains across Bitcoin, Ethereum, and especially across smaller cap altcoins. So getting this right really could make the difference in where you land up financially over the course of the next four to 10 years if you're betting here on cryptocurrencies. So let's take a look at this. We're going to take a look at a couple different things that I think are really important. And I'll first off start off by saying that, of course, I don't have a crystal ball. I, you know, nobody can predict the future of exactly what's going to happen. Shoot, a meteor could come and crash into the earth tomorrow and we're all gone for all we know, right? All we can do is just take a look at history and take a look at what's happened in the past because history doesn't necessarily repeat, but it rhymes. It tends to kind of follow a similar pattern. To start, let's go ahead and take a look at the Bitcoin halvings. If you're unfamiliar, Familiar, uh, Bitcoin halvings basically happen every four years where the supply of Bitcoin is shrunken in half. So in 2009, when Bitcoin first started coming out, basically you could get 50 Bitcoins per block reward. That basically meant that every 10 minutes, 50 new Bitcoins were being issued onto the open market uh, to miners for validating the network. In 2012, they basically cut that in half. So now only 25 get rewarded to Bitcoin miners. And then in 2016, only 12.5 were actually rewarded. And then most recently in 2020, about 6.25 is the reward currently. And then soon it's going to three, be 3.125 coming in 2024. Now, if we take a look at that, for example, uh, because this is kind of how uh, up until this point, Bitcoin and the rest of the cryptocurrency market has moved. And the reason we're taking a look at Bitcoin and not just crypto in general, because Bitcoin still acts as an index, right? Everything follows Bitcoin uh, for the most part. And the really the way that Bitcoin is being traded right now is it's kind of viewed as a higher risk tech stock. So we do see Bitcoin correlating and the crypto market correlating somewhat close to what's happening in the stock market and actually very close. And if we take a look here, the next Bitcoin halving is like 564 days from now. Okay. So that's like a year and a half from now. Uh, we're still out from the next Bitcoin halving. Now, if we take a look at this chart and uh, see what's kind of happened throughout these different having points, you can see that we kind of go through these phases where we'll go through a massive bull market that'll happen. Then we go through this bear market and then we go through like this accumulation phase where Bitcoin starts to rebound some of its price. And then we go on and we go off into another bull market. This is what we saw in 2017, followed by a very sharp bear market. And then we kind of had this accumulation phase where price action was sort of boring and uh, price was kind of reclaiming itself. And then boom, what do we have? We have this extra bull market that came off and that we saw uh, happen uh, throughout this past year in 2021. And then obviously right now we're in this sharp down bear market. Now, with all of that being said, where can we predict that the market heads next? And will we see another bull market run coming here leading in to the end of the year. And I don't think that we're gonna see a crazy bull market coming into the end of the year. I think it's gonna take a little bit longer based on uh, one key factor that I'm gonna talk about in just a second. Now, if we just take a look about, you know, what kind of happened here from 2012, after this first initial halving, uh, we saw a 100X increase in price for Bitcoin. And then in 2016, we saw a, a 30X increase in the price of Bitcoin after the second halving. And after the third halving, we saw an 8X uh, increase in price in Bitcoin. And this is because, you know, the rewards are diminishing as anything does, right? We kind of go through this, what's called like an S curve or a sigmoid curve where we see this really sharp adoption that happens here and we see this sharp trend and then things start kind of evening off. This is called a sigmoid curve. And uh, ultimately, so what could we expect for 2024 uh, when this next halving comes? I think that we could see like a two to three X that comes from the previous all time highs, which would probably put uh, you know, Bitcoin, uh, you know, may, maybe around like a hundred or $150,000 is where that number is, is actually coming from. So if we just take a look at this four year having, which again, this isn't everything. And I'll explain what I think is 
probably even more important. We're in this bear market phase, but bear markets do not last forever. And uh, there is a probability and a chance that maybe we've already seen the lows. Now we see Bitcoin kind of testing the lows here again. Maybe we have already seen the lows with you know all of the craziness that happened with the UST, with Three Arrows Capital getting liquidated, with Celsius blowing up, all of this. I mean, that felt like max pain to me. So I think for the next little while, we could see kind of boring price action. Uh, maybe we go sideways for a little bit like we have in these previous accumulation phases for quite some time. You know, we slowly start to pick up before we see another bull market, which will happen uh, if, if anything, according to this after the next halving, which, you know, wouldn't be for another like year and a half. So, you know, not really see an all time high for like a year and a half. Uh, with that all taken into consideration. But there is one thing that I think is probably more important. Now, if we take a look at towards the top here of this market, towards November, uh, everything was going fine and dandy. People were euphoric. Everything was great. The markets were pumping. And right around this place in uh, November, this is when uh, Jerome Powell, the head of the Fed, uh, basically uh, announced that there is a possibility that they will begin raising interest rates, which uh, this is really, really important for us to take a look at because as soon as he mentioned that there is possibility that they'll start raising interest rates, the markets have pretty much dumped since then. And as we've gotten these rises in interest rates, rises, rises, rises in interest rates, it's been really, really bad for risk assets. Not only uh, has it been bad for Bitcoin, but it's been bad for uh, the stock market as well. As you can see here, you can see that, you know, we kind of saw the top happen here with the stock market right around the same time, like around November, December of 2021. And then it's pretty much just been all downhill from there. Now the stock market is actually in a bear market. In the stock market, uh, anything considered more than 20% down uh, from all time highs is considered a bear market. So according to this, technically, we officially hit a bear market come around like May of 2022. So we've been in a bear market for what, like the past four months or so. And historically, bear markets in the stock market have lasted around a year or so. So this would, according to this, mean that we may not get a pump or uh, you know a, a, an increase really in price and towards uh, the beginning of the next year if this uh, holds up or maybe even midway into next year if we're going to continue to follow the stock market. But I think the most important thing is here what happens with interest rates. So obviously the way that the Fed can control what happens in the macroeconomic world is with what they do with interest rates. And as interest rates get higher, this makes money more expensive. And so this makes people take less risk. Generally, if interest rates go up, then this is really, really bad for risk assets, okay, which we've seen here. So as we've seen throughout history, pretty much when the money supply is increasing or when they're printing money, like we saw what happened with when COVID came around and the US government started printing money to pay for the COVID war, we saw Bitcoin do really, really well. And uh, so we're kind of waiting on that signal. Once we do get that signal that more money is gonna start being printed and interest rates are going to be uh, lowered, then I think this is ultimately the sign that uh, Bitcoin and crypto assets will begin pumping. And I think it'll be pretty easy to see that as soon as we get wind of this, we'll see the market starting to move around as people begin to uh, start taking more and more risks. Now, when will this happen? We don't know exactly, but one thing that we do know is there will be an election. And currently in America, right, the Democratic Party is in office. And since the Democratic Party has been in office, pretty much uh, what has happened is the price of uh, food and fuel uh, has gone up significantly. And so people feel like they're a lot poorer. Plus the stock market has really tanked. So people's assets are worth less. And uh, people don't, I don't think people will really vote for that. They don't really like that. So I think that in order for the Democratic Party to be in office again, they're going to need to do something. Basically what they're going to need to do is they're going to need to lower interest rates and probably start printing money again at some point leading up until the election. So I think that this is ultimately, it's going to happen. The market just moves in these phases and in these bearish cycles. With all of that being said, I think that, you know, we can somewhat look at history and look at this, you know, four year uh, halving cycle that happens with Bitcoin and the rest of the market follows. Uh, but ultimately, I think what's ultimately more important is what happens uh, with the macroeconomic situation in terms of interest rates. So with that being said, if this video was helpful, then go ahead, like, subscribe, turn on the post notifications and feel free to check out some of the other helpful videos on our channel here.